Okay, today we're doing a tutorial on Chapter 4 from Adobe Flash CS3 Professional Classroom in a Book. Um, in this chapter is working with text. And we're going to be creating text in Flash, formatting it, converting the text fields to symbols, using masks, or organizing layers in a timeline, working with layer folders, copying objects from one layer to another, applying filters, and using tweening to animate objects quickly. To begin with, we're going to be opening a file from our Classroom in a Book Lessons folders. And in this case, we'll be in Chapter 4 and Start. And you can see that we're kind of joining a project already in progress, and we'll be manipulating it to make a green card. Okay, to get an idea of what the card is going to look like at the end, we'll look here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is save our file with a different name. So I'm going to go save as, and instead of just start, I'm going to leave it to add working to the end of the file name. That way we can save it and still start over if we really get things messed up, which I've actually done with this lesson. The other thing I want to look at is over here you'll see that we have in our library some a bunch of these different things. This is our sound file, obviously. Um, there's the floor, flowers, the phone, the table, a graphic that can be used on the phone, um, the dots that go on the wall, the wallpaper itself, and individual segments. Alright, so we're going to be working with those things up here. Okay, so right now if I click on the first keyframe in our assets layer, you can see that basically everything that is here on the stage um, and in the pasteboard area is selected. So what we want to do is, these are all the pieces that we're going to be working with, and we want to put them on their own individual layers. All right, so up here, if I click on the assets layer here, I can add two layers. So here's the insert layer button. I go click, click, and then I'll change the first layer and call it actions, because generally actions go on the top layer so that people can find it pretty easy. And the second layer is going to be sounds, and those will go on the second mm -hmm. layer. Um, sometimes sounds will be, you know, across all the different layers, but it's if you're just starting out, it's good to keep them separated so you can find things. Okay, the next thing we want to do here is add a layer folder. All right, so I'm going to go down here to Assets and click a layer folder, and then what this does is it will let us put layers inside a folder so that we can keep things closed up if we would like to. All right, and I'm going to call this layer folder Text and Battery. All right. Okay, so I want to create a layer here, and you'll see that it doesn't put it inside the layer. So I'm going to grab that and drag it to the layer, and you can see that it's kind of indented a bit so you can tell that it's inside. And I'm going to call this layer low bat. All right, and that's where our low battery symbol is going to go. Okay, so now I want to put in more layers here, so I'm going to go, I'm going to click on insert layer here five times. One, two, three, four, five drag this down so I can see my layers. And I'm going to name these according to the text here. Birthday message and incoming text message. One layer is just called hi. One layer is called just wanted. And this final layer here is called I Hope. All right, the next step we want to do is go down here and click on Assets. And we want to insert a new layer here. Because I clicked on Assets, it's going to go down outside of our folder here. And again, if I was to click this little triangle, I could close up that layer and go back down to my layer here. And I'm going to call this one Background. OK going to insert another layer here, and I'm going to call this one Cell Phone. Okay, so let's here start working with the Assets layer. And so if I click on the Assets layer, you can see that it selects everything on that layer, including stuff way down here 
on the board, on the pasteboard. What I want to do is I want to be able to change some of these settings. So I want to click off of the selections onto the pasteboard side so that we get this back. And then I want to go over here. All right, and I want to hold my shift down. I want to select the flower, the floor, the table, and the wallpaper. All right, and I'm going to make this my background layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do edit, cut. You see how all that stuff is gone now. And I'm going to go back up here to the background layer, click on the first frame, and do edit, paste in place. All right, so that's all in there now. And just so that we don't mess anything up, I'm going to hide that layer. And you'll see that there's a little pencil with a slasher, meaning we can't change the background layer right now. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing here by clicking on the battery. See, when I click the battery, it jumped down to the assets layer. So I'm going to do edit, cut, and go to the low bat battery layer on the first keyframe, and paste in place. And I can hide that one too if I want, don't want to mess that up. Go back down to my assets layer here and there's nothing up there. But I do have my phone area here. So I'm going to do edit cut. And I want to go up here to the cell phone layer on the first keyframe and paste that in place. All right, so it's still obviously if we were to test this right now, let me go ahead and show these layers again. If we were to test these now, it would look something like this. Okay, and then we haven't done anything yet. You see nothing's moving. There's no sound. Um, and we're going to be making some of those changes to add these pieces in. Okay, the next thing is deleting a layer. Now, this assets layer right now is pretty useless to us. So you can click on the layer here, then click on the little trash can, and that deletes that layer. Now we don't have to deal with it anymore. All right, so again, when we start to play this movie, we don't want the low battery thing to show right away. So out here on the low battery layer, um, if I drag this out a little bit from here at the beginning, the low battery doesn't show, but it shows up there. And what we want to do is drag this keyframe way out here. Whoops, let's make sure we keep it on the low battery layer. And we want to drag it out to 199. Okay, and I can tell that it's 199 by this little current frame box. All right. Next, I want to work on my sounds. So up here, I can click in my sound layer somewhere. Let me go down to frame 47. And again, make sure you're on frame 47 here. And I'm going to do F7, which inserts a blank keyframe. And again, you can just do insert timeline blank keyframe if you'd like. Okay, so if I was to go down here in the sound things, because I've already got this sound file in our um, program, I can, in the sound, just select this corny birthday. And down on my sync menu, I'm going to tell it I want it to stream. Okay, and that just means it's going to start at this point. All right, so you can see this now. And if I was to actually drag this um, through, you can actually hear what it sounds like. Um, kind of screechy and if I push enter it would actually play it alright so right now what I want to do is I want to tell this when to stop and by stop I mean the entire movie if I was to just let it continue it would get to the end and then start the movie over so what I want to do here is go out to frame 253 out here at the end and I want to be on the actions layer at the moment and and I want to hit F7 to put a new keyframe you see it puts this little dot right here okay so I want to open up actions which is the the language that lets us tell things to you know start or stop or play or whatever so I'm gonna to go to window actions and you see the shortcut is F9 and it brings up this big window and you can either choose things built in already or we can just type in a command and in this case I'm just going to do stop whoops parentheses and then a semicolon alright now that is going to tell our movie to stop and I can close this and you'll see that there's a little A above that keyframe now and that A just means that there's an action assigned okay now the next thing I want to do is I want to make 
the thing fade in, kind of like a title sequence. So if I was to test it right now, it's just, bam, it starts right there. But I want to have it to where it kind of fades in from white. So if I click the first keyframe on my background layer, you can see that all of these little individual pieces are selected. All right, now what I want to do is I want to make all of that one solid piece to make this easier. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it, the F8 key and it's convert to symbol. You can also do modify convert to symbol. Um, but I'm going to leave this as a movie clip and I'm going to call it background objects. All right, I'm going to click OK. And out here around frame 10, make sure I get on 10, there we go. Um, I'm going to do F6 to insert a keyframe. All right, now what that does is that means if I change something from here to here, it'll actually animate when I'm ready. All right, so for example, I can click somewhere in here, it doesn't really matter where, anywhere between those dots. And down here on tween, I can tell it I want a motion tween. Now we haven't moved anything, but what we can do is go back here to the first keyframe and under our all of our little settings in here okay I would like to be able to make some changes but I can't see any of my options here so if I click off you can see this changes and then I can click on my single background object and so I have these different settings in here now what I want to be able to do is change my color I want to adjust my brightness and again I'm still on that first keyframe all right, I want to adjust my brightness from 0% to 100%, and I hit enter, and you'll see it just goes white. But if I was to drag my scrubber here forward, you can see how it kind of fades in, because it knows we start with 100% and we get to 0%, and because we did the motion tween, it's going to actually do that for us automatically. So now if I hit control enter to test my movie, see it does a nice fade in. Okay, the next thing we want to do is adjust, is use the same technique, but to create an animation. And we're going to be doing something with the cell phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first dot, the first keyframe in the cell phone layer. And I'm going to drag that out to frame 77. Whoops, got to stay on the same layer here. And that's 76 and 77. Next, I'm going to go out here on the same layer to frame 86, and I'm going to insert a keyframe, which is F6. And again, I can click anywhere in the middle here, and down on my tween, select motion. The other thing is if I right-click anywhere in here, um, I can do create motion tween. It'll do the same thing. Okay, so again, we're starting from that position, and it's currently ending in that position. So if I was to go ahead and make my um, phone in a different place, for example, up here on the background, um, then it would actually move it from there to there. So in a book, it tells us to have this thing move from 471 here. We're going to put in 321. And you see how this moved over to the left. And now our Y coordinate, we're going to put 267. All right, so what that does is going from here to here, okay, you can see that that comes up. And actually, I just realized I should push this back to two points because it should be on frame 84, not frame 86. All right, so the other thing that we could do if we chose to is resize this or something. Um, we don't really need to do that at this time, but you could if you wanted to have it look like it gets closer or something. All right, so if I was to test the movie now, it would fade in. In a second, you'll hear sound, dial of the dialing of your phone, and the phone will come up. And then there should be things scrolling across here, and when you get to the end, the battery pops in. So things seem to be working. All right. Obviously, we still have some work to do, but we are getting there. In part two of this lesson, we'll be dealing with adding the text and rotating and copying and things like that. So I'm going to 
stop right now, let you guys regroup, and then we'll do uh, the text part. Thanks a lot.